Hello YouTube, we're going to be talking about USB device driver programming. Um, of course, we're still going to be in Linux. Every valid USB device has a vendor ID and a major ID. And that's how, that's how the system is able to recognize the device. And so what first happens is when you plug your device to the computer, the USB host controller takes all the binary information, the low level information, and makes it available and understandable by an operating system independent the system called the USB core and further what happens is the USB core gives that information over to the operating system in our case the Linux kernel um, at that time the kernel check to see if there's any device driver that's available to handle the particular device if one is available the kernel then makes the device available to the user space if there's no driver available then the kernel still recognizes still recognizes the device however the user space or applications can never know of the device's existence okay so further on uh, the device is configured in such a way that every device has a profile which is the configuration and within the configuration there are a number of interfaces on that device and what the interface is is basically it describes the functionality of the device so for example a device could be a printer it could also be a fax it could also be a scanner so for each function there's going to be an interface um, at the same time each interface has one or more endpoints and each endpoint basically describes how or basically describes input and output so as a way to take information from the computer to the device every device has endpoints zero and that endpoint zero is used to initialize the device and make it ready for usage there are different types of endpoints endpoints can be a control endpoint interrupt bulk or isochronous endpoints and the difference between these are that endpoints that are of the type control they're used for controlling the device such as resetting the device and querying for information interrupt endpoints are used for sending fast information between the device and the computer endpoints are typically a byte long with the most significant bits indicating the direction of data direction either from the computer to the device or the device to the computer and I should mention real quick that all of these types of endpoints are one direction unidirectional except for the control endpoint which is bidirectional both in and out and so um, now we're going to talk about the bulk transfer and this is usually used for mass storage and it's used to transfer large amounts of data at once and isochronous is also much like the bulk transfer where it transfers laws large quantities of information it's just that it has a bandwidth guarantee and it's usually found with um, audio and video devices also endpoints are identified by addresses and so each endpoint has a particular address and that's used to actually pipe the information send the information to the actual device or get information from the device to the um, kernel all right real quick I'm gonna show uh, all right real quick I'm gonna show this command called LS USB what it does is display all the USB devices attached to your computer typically you can ignore these as they are just um, built internally to your uh, machine and you want to focus on something uh, like this I have a Wacom tablet attached to my computer I use that for drawing or also I have a wireless mouse attached to my uh, computer and here it tells you that it's on bus number three and it's ID number three and this is the vendor ID and this is the product ID when we're actually doing some programming we're gonna need this value so this is important here uh, likewise with the tablet this is it's on bus number three and it's on ID is a device 22 in hexadecimal and its vendor ID is this the product ID is is this again this is what you need to be able to program a USB driver okay that's gonna do it for this tutorial join me next time and we'll actually get into um, writing the device driver software and I'll show you how to do that next time and as always please remember to rate this video and leave any comments and subscriptions are always appreciated thank you